Good morning, beloveds. If you hear anything odd in the background, my my partner is watching uh, Women's World Cup soccer. soccer. <laughs> Occasionally, he disagrees with the refs. So, um, it's a warm day in the park, but it was a good day in the park. There were not a whole lot of squirrels, and I, I, I have a couple of theories of why there's not a whole lot of squirrels. One of them being that um, it's just, it's the middle of the year, it's really hot, and they probably have babies. So the ones we're seeing are the ones who aren't actively, you know, taking care of babies. So that's my theory anyway. Um, the other theory is there was a hawk in the park today. Did I get a picture? Yes. Is it good? I don't know. We'll find out. Because uh, as soon as I was getting, as I was heading off the gra off the path to see if I could get a little bit better of a shot, the mockingbirds chased the hawk out of the tree that it was in. Um, the other thing that was interesting is we were, as we were coming around towards the end of the walk, um, I happened to glance down and there was this beautiful blue jay feather just right there. And I was like, all right. So I picked it up and we're walking around and then I was thinking, you know what? I want to take a picture of this. So, uh, we were in a little part of the park. Um, there's just, just this little loop where there's a, I can't even think of what it's called. Because it's not a gazebo, but it's a covered part where they have a bunch of picnic tables. There's a grill, what have you. Um, pavilion! Pavilion! That's the word! Uh, sorry, I was trying to think about what it was earlier. And so we stopped. I, so I, and, and they just had put in a nice new curb. So I was like, so I put the feather down on the curb. As I put this nice, big, beautiful feather down on the curb, I see a much smaller, but still blue feather in the leaves right next to the curb. And I went, of all the places that I could have stopped to take a picture of the feather, I found a second feather. Talk about the gifts from the universe. All right. Well, it is July 29th. Our title is Divine Wisdom, which is a gift from the universe. Uh, our author is Helen Zagat from Faith and Works, 1955. So, all right. Divine Wisdom. God is wisdom. Because we have accepted the truth that God is mind, spirit, living intelligence, we can more readily comprehend the attribute of wisdom. Wisdom is the idea of absolute knowing in divine mind. God is all, therefore God is wisdom. Wisdom is the movement of divine mind, the light of creative mind activity. This is knowing in the absolute. Since people stem forth from God as the individualization of the perfect idea, people, wisdom, the perfect idea, people, uh, wisdom is available to people. As people become receptive, so are they quickened by the movement of mind. The light of divine wisdom quickens, inspires, and uplifts them. Divine wisdom is the absolute aspect of knowing. Intellect is the human or relative aspect. Since the creation is in mind, the movement of mind gives us a basis for our power to think. The one mind sees its own image. The Christ mind has within it the original principles of the creator and the creation. People partake of the qualities of the universal Christ mind when they turn consciously within. The intellect is mind embodied. It is the human use of mind. It is not perfect. It is accept, it has accepted experience as real. The intellect can turn within to truth or without to the evidence of the senses. In the intellect is the power of choice, so people can choose the type of thought, feeling, and action that they shall follow. Kind of makes you want to know what's in the rest of the reading, right? <laughs> that was page 29 and 30 in her uh, in Faith and Works. Uh, and it says there's no known copyright, so it's possible it's available on the internet. Uh, I would hope so. There's a, a lot of the, a lot of books, early New Thought books, which have gone out of copyright, are available as PDFs on the internet. So it's one of those things, 
go and take a look for it. You might be able to find it. Um, she has a very simple premise. Look, you know what? God is all there is. Therefore, God is wisdom. And when we accept that, then we have access to that divine wisdom. Intellect is the human use of the mind. Uh, so it's like we have mind with a capital M and mind with a little m. And mind with capital M is obviously the divine mind. Uh, and that is where divine wisdom comes from. Whereas the, the lowercase m, the human intellect mind, um, and one of the things that I've said, and cause we, we had a, I joined the philosophy Friday group, which is a fantastic, cause we never know where that conversation is going to go. Um, and they, we talked about what wisdom is. And I think there's a couple of different kinds of wisdom. I've always maintained that wisdom is knowledge plus experience, uh, where, cause it's like, okay, I can read everything that I want in the book, but until I go out and do something, I haven't gained true wisdom. I need the experience of actually doing it. But the good thing about the divine wisdom, wisdom, uh, the, the divine wisdom is because God is not bound by time or space. Uh, time is, time is a material function. So we have access to the divine wisdom, which is not bound by time and space because everything already exists within the divine wisdom. Everything already exists within the divine mind. That's one of the, one of the things that makes, um, affirmative prayer and uh, spiritual mind treatment so effective is because what we are saying is what we are treating for already exists in the mind of God. And what we are doing is signaling our acceptance. It's like, okay, I'm coming into alignment so that this thing, which already exists in the mind of God can come into my, ex my material experience. And, and that's kind of what she says. It's like, we've accepted experiences as real. Okay, so whatever exists in the mind of God, we can accept into our material experience. We can. Are we willing? <laughs> and it requires some work on our part to accept things in our um, material experiences, starting with the willingness, the willingness. And so, sometimes we have to go out and do things and sometimes we have to go out and get things. And sometimes things will come to us. Uh it's, you never know. I, I had the most amazing experience at work yesterday. And this is definitely that divine mind, that divine wisdom. Um, I walked in and it was one of those days, uh, the owner of the store had gotten there really early and he went ahead. And I, I guess he must've left the door open. <laughs> and so customers were, so by the time I got there, which was, you know, when we opened at 10 o'clock, um, the, there were already people in the store and one person who had come in, she, I guess I'd worked with her before. And so she knew that I had plenty of experience that I had been in the industry for a, a long time. And so she came in and she asked, she wanted, she wanted to ask, she knew I was coming. So she was willing to wait. And so we, I, we talked about her, we, we talked about what she was, the two, she, first she's, she had some questions for her son. Then she had a couple of questions for herself. And then she hits me with her uh, father who's in her, his eighties. Okay. And then what she, based on what she told me, I was like, okay, so there's a couple of things that I can suggest for you, but based on the medications he's on, I don't know, you know, but here's what I can give you because at a time, and I have no idea when I read the article, I had read this article about this doctor in Mississippi who was looking at um, the um, amputations, diabetic, diabetic related amputations. Uh, and he was like, there's got to be something we can do about this. These people don't have to lose their limbs. Now, I will also tell you what he was focused on was the diabetic amputations in, um, the African-American population in, and he was like, there's gotta be something we can do because there's not a corresponding number of di of, of, of diabetic related amputations in the, um, Caucasian population. So, you know, what, what, let, let's take a look. And so, and he set up a foundation and, I read this article. 
I have never, I haven't thought about that article since, but clearly it stuck in the back of my mind. So when she comes to me and she asks me this question, I was like, I know a couple of things that might help you, but here's the best thing for you. And the good news is, because I didn't remember the doctor's name, because it's it's an unusual name. Because see, now even here, I, I can't tell you. Uh, but what I did was I went to Google and I typed in Dr. Mississippi Amputations. And it pulled him up. <laughs> it pulled, and I knew it was him. I knew it was him because it said, and I said, look, right. And she's like, I will take my father to Mississippi. It was like, you may not have to take your father to Mississippi. They have a foundation. You can look and see if somebody here has been trained by that foundation. Or maybe you need to take your father to Mississippi. That's one of those cool things. Had she talked to anybody else in the store and made that, they wouldn't have known about this doctor because they didn't read the article. And I read the article, who knows when I read the article, but it was sticking in the back of my mind. And when she said what she said, God went, you already have this information. You And that, that right there, that is one of the most amazing parts of my job. When I can give somebody a piece of information that I picked up randomly because I read the article because I was interested in the article. I was like, oh, well, there's something we can do about this. You know, my desire is to help. My desire is to, to be of service. So I have this little information and she asked. And it, and it is just, that's, that's, I would call that a God thing, you know, because she came in, she asked the one person in the store who'd read that article and remembered that article. And that is divine wisdom. That is divine wisdom because that article came to me at such time. It was so, it was interesting enough that I stored it back somewhere in the, you know, in, in the, in the, in the back part of my mind through my training in ministerial school, I was able to put in, I was able to Google, because that's what I did, you know, I was able, because you can do pluses and minuses when you're Googling. And so it was doctor plus Mississippi plus amputations. And, and it pulled him up and he, he was like the first three YouTube videos and like every article that pulled up, it, they knew, they knew, you know, so you can do it. So if all of the pieces fell into place, right there. That's, and that's what we can do. That is what we can do. We can access the divine mind for that information. I read the article, who knows when, but it was in the divine mind. So that's what we're talking about. That's the really, that's the way it can work. That is the way it can work. I had that piece of information she needed and she came and she asked for me. She didn't know I had that information. I didn't even know I had that information until she asked me. Then I, and I remembered the article. That is what divine wisdom can look like. Where you have the piece of information or someone, you 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 go and you ask the right person the right, right question and they have that piece of information. And you can still see, I'm still really excited about that. Does it happen often? No. But... The more you lean into it, the more often it will happen. The more you trust that the information that you need will come to you, it'll happen. It'll happen more often. Lean into And that's what she's saying. That is exactly what she's saying. We can lean into that. Um, divine wisdom is the absolute aspect of knowing. Intellect is the human or relative aspect. Since we, since we stem from God as the individuation, individualization of the perfect idea of us, the perfect idea of human, humanity, wisdom is available to us. As we become receptive, so we are quickened by the movement of the mind. That's what happened to me yesterday. I was quickened by the movement of the mind it's available to us. All right. It's available to us. And that is, that is what Helen is telling us today. The divine wisdom is always available to us. What we have to do is one, be willing Two, lean in three, do our work, <laughs> do our work, do our work. All right. So what is the mission today? She, it's kind of that last paragraph. The intellect is mind embodied. It is 
the human use of mind. It is, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has accepted the experience as real. Intellect can turn, intellect can turn within to the truth or without the evidence of the senses. And sometimes, honestly, it's like we have to let go of the evidence of the senses and turn within. Turn within. And then we can come back to the evidence of our senses and we'll know what to do about them. So, uh, the in the intellect is the power of choice. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, we can choose the type of thought, feeling, and action that we will follow. That's... The mission today, should we, should we choose to accept it, is to know that we are at choice in the divine mind. The divine wisdom is always available to us. It is up to us to choose it, to turn within. And sometimes we do have to let go of the evidence of the census. Sometimes we do. All right. That is the mission today, should we choose to accept it. It's all about divine wisdom. All right. I got caught up in my story, but I really think that's how divine wisdom works. You have within you the key and maybe you'll unlock something in yourself or maybe you'll unlock it in somebody else and you'll get what you need. Trust the process. Trust the process. Do your work and trust the process. All right, beloveds. Um, here's where I'm going to take that deep breath and so we have the mission today. The other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is a spiritual practice of do we, uh, of self-care. The spiritual practice of self-care. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like. Big, small, it does not matter. The point is to practice on yourself. I am encouraging you to create a habit of responding to everything lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. All right. It takes 21 days to create a habit. And the truth is we don't break habits. We replace habits. Well, why not replace any habit with love, kindness, and compassion? And when we do it every day, when we create that well-worn path to the source of our own being, which is the source of infinite love, infinite kindness, infinite compassion, then we never run out. Never run out. When you need a little extra, you are plugged into the infinite source. When you meet people who need a little extra, one, you've already got a bank of your own, and two, you're connected to the infinite source of love, kindness, and compassion. So practice on yourself. And one of the most important re reasons for practicing on yourself is you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You teach people how to treat you by how you treat yourself. Treat yourself with love, kindness, and compassion. Always. All right? Always. Even when you're doing the hard stuff. Even when you are making those changes. Do it with love, kindness, and compassion. It'll be easier that way, too. Anyway. And what does that look like? It looks like taking a deep breath before you speak. It looks like taking a walk. It looks like taking a nap. It looks like taking um, a break. It looks like saying no to something that drains you. It looks like saying yes to something that pushes you a little out of your comfort zone. It looks like eating dessert first. It looks like not saving the good stuff. It looks like burning the nice candles now, writing in the good notebooks, wearing the comfortable clothes, uh, using the good dishware and silverware and glassware for ordinary days. Because... Even ordinary days are extraordinary. We may only come this way once. Why not celebrate? Why not? And as, well, I, also, I want to remind you that joy is a quality of God. No matter what is going on in the world, no matter what is going on in your life, you deserve joy. Okay? Make room in your life for joy. That's part of what the self-care is about. Make room for joy. All right. Okay. Um, the rest of the suggestions are the, easy, the, the usual easy ones. Do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you today. Uh, drink plenty of water. It is still really hot. So please hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Your brain and body work better when they are well hydrated. Um, and especially with it being as warm it is, as it is, make sure you drink, hydrate and, and keep cool. Okay. Um, and then, there's one more. What is it? Early in your day, bright light. 
<laughs> I'm talking about that. It's that seven to nine, you know, when the sun comes up and I'm talking five to 10 minutes, uh, we, we work on the, we walk on the north side of the park, which is very shady, but there are still plenty of places where I get that, you know, I, I get at least 10 minutes of that early in, in my day, bright light. Um, that it's a circadian, it's called a circadian rhythm. It's a natural hormone cycle when you get that early in your day, bright light. And if you, if you get up before the sun, artificial light will help too. Uh, it helps to reset those hormones. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. All right. That's the way it works. So, um, and then we end with the open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. It's a mindset, just like accepting divine wisdom is a mindset. Heaven is a mindset. It is a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. Once you learn that heaven ceases to be a place you have to get to and can become any place you are. That, my friends, that is a superpower. And she mentioned the Christ consciousness, the Christ mind. Well, here's the good news. You come pre-installed with the Christ mind. It is already within you. It's like factory settings. And the password to activate it, it's love. It's love. All of the teachers came to teach love. All of them. All of them. They came to teach love. That is the central premise the most powerful force in the universe and gratitude is just another word for love. So, you know, that's why we, you can take Emma's advice. If you are looking to create that heavenly mindset, you take Emma's advice, look for the good and praise it. Okay. Ernest is it, it, encouraging us to open the windows of our, our soul, look around and recognize it's all God. It is all God. There's nothing but God. And Emma says, look for the good and praise it. Those two things will get you to heaven every time. All right. Okay. Um, and loving your neighbor as yourself. But, you know, hey. <laughs> There's been some discussion about the loving the neighbor. Uh, it's like, it's hard to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't really like yourself. So maybe you need to start by liking yourself. Then you can learn to love your neighbor. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Um... But look for the good and praise it, as Emma says. Okay. Uh, social media. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Feel free to check that stuff out. Uh, I also, the, the, the playlists on the YouTube channels. Oh, yeah. That's where it's at. The rest of the social medias have gotten a little more difficult, but the YouTube channel, there's lots of great content there. So, you know, check it out. Okay. Um, and then I would encourage you to also, if you want to know what's going on with the, with the center, email info at creativelife.org. That'll get you on the constant contact because this Sunday we have Reverend Arthur. Jesse is letting us have, he has given up the stage for, for one Sunday at the end of July. And Reverend Arthur is going to come back to the first uh, Emma Emerson article. So he's, he's wrapping up the Emerson, even though Jesse's decided he's going to keep going because you know, everybody likes Emerson, right? It took me a while. <laughs> I, had to, I had to learn to love Emerson. When I first read Emerson, I was like, what is this crock? But you know, he's got a point. I'm getting there. Like I, first time I read Emma, I was like, I love Emma. Not everybody loves Emma. So same with Emerson. I've had, I've learned to love Emerson. All right. So do the email. All right. And now I get to encourage you to have a great day, wondrous day, a fantastic day, magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a divine wisdom day, a know who you are day, a practice on yourself day, a kindness day, a compassionate day, a loving day, a consistent day, a consciousness day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, Simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light, a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are a godly in whom God is well pleased and well represented. Get to know the truth of your own being. The most important work you will ever do in this world is to explore your own being. When you know who you are, it's easier to love yourself 
when you love yourself, it's easier to love your neighbors, especially when your neighbors don't look like you, don't think like you. And that, that's the calling, always. All right? To delight in the diversity within the unity, the multiplicity within the one. And I said delight in, and I mean that. Delight in. All right. So we can have a delightful day. <laughs> All right. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. And then Reverend Arthur is going to take the stage. And if you've heard Reverend Arthur, you know he's going to take the stage. He will be amazing. He always is. He is. He does the barnstorming. Reverend Jesse gets up there and tells it like it is and gives us that education. And then Reverend Arthur just comes in and raises the roof and raises the roof. So there'll be a whole lot of energy in the room tomorrow. So if you're in the area, you're welcome. And if you're not, then please check us out online. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, YouTube, then feel free to go to the Creative Life YouTube channel. And Reverend Arthur has his own playlist. Okay. Uh, anytime we have somebody who's regularly on the stage, and even if they're not regularly on the stage, I do have what we call the guest speakers uh, playlist. And anybody that's on the stage that is not Reverend Jesse goes into that. But then if you've been on the stage more than twice or more than actually more than once, I'll give you your own playlist. So, all right. So feel free to check that out. All right. I'm just going to stop talking now. Have a great day. Know that you are loved. I will see you next time.